Okay, so right now the enemy is just able to kill the player uh, without any um, any cooldown or anything. So basically, the enemy can hit the player a lot of times right after each other. Um, and usually in games, the player has this little um, advantage that he will become immortal for a little while when he takes damage, um, so that he has a chance to get away or to kill the enemy. Because usually there is more enemies against one player. Uh, so to make it a little more fair, he will become immortal. So let's add the immortality to the player. So we need to go to the player script. And the reason that we do it in the player script instead of the character script is of course because the character is also an enemy, so or the enemy is also a character, so we don't need to make the enemy mortal. So we have to go to the take damage function, if I could find it anywhere. Here we go. And in here we have to make some uh, functionality for becoming immortal. First of all, we set the trigger damage, and the next thing we have to do is to indicate if the player is immortal. So we have to make a boolean that indicates if he's an immortal or not. So if we go to the top, uh, we can create a private bool called immortal. Um, and this one is false from the get-go. And then we have a private float called immortal time. So how long does the player need to be able to be mortal? Um, see what I wrote in my notes. I wrote, haven't even written it. Um, let's just make it into a civilized field then. So we can check, so we can set it from our um, inspector. Serialized field, there we go. So we can set it in the inspector here. So down here in our um, take damage function, where did I go? Here. Inside the take damage function, we'll have to make sure that we set immortal to true. So when we take damage, we set immortal to true because now we are immortal. And then we need to return, uh, of course, yield, return, new, uh, wait for seconds. So we have to wait a little um, and we use the immortal time to wait. So when the immortal time is over, we go back to being non-immortal. Okay. Um, besides that, we need to check if we are immortal. So we have an if statement outside here. It says if um, immortal. So if we are not immortal, then we can reduce our health and do all these things here. So just copy all this and paste it. And, and now we don't need to re yield return null down here because we are yield returning in here, I think. Yeah. So, um, right now, if we are not immortal, we reduce our health, we check if we are dead, and we die if we are dead. Um, and we take the damage function, uh, damage, um, what is it called, uh, animation. So if we click on the player, uh, then we can select the immortal time, click on the player, and on the player, down here, you can't see it from my face, <laughs> but it's written immortal time, zero right now, and we'll have to set this immortal time to, for example, free. So try to set your immortal time to free. And if we play the game, and we jump up here, then he should only take damage from the first hit here. And when she hits him, then you can see he's immortal, immortal, take damage again. Now he's immortal, so he doesn't take this, and the next hit, he should take. There we go. So now he is immortal, but we have no indication of him being immortal. We need to flash him uh, so that we can see that he's immortal. And what we can do here is that we can actually, if we look at the player here, what we can do is we can go from our code and enable and disable the sprite renderer a few times when he's immortal. So this will should indicate that he's immortal. So this is what we need to do from our code. So go to your player script and make a private uh, i enumerator um, and call it indicate immortal. So this one needs to be triggered when we start to be immortal. So 
we make an if statement that says while, uh, while loop that says while immortal. So as long as we are immortal, we will take the sprite renderer. And we don't have a sprite render right now, so we need to access it. So go to the top. Um, and the sprite render we are accessing is this one right here, because we need to access it from the script. So we need to go back to the script here and create a sprite render. Ah, that was annoying. Let's see here. Sprite uh, private. Sprite render. Um, sprite render. So this is my sprite renderer and I need to set this so I can go to my start function here and say sprite renderer equals get component sprite renderer. There we go. And we can just move it here to rigid body. So now we have a reference to the sprite renderer on the player. So now that we have this reference, we can actually start to flash him on and off. So to flash him we say sprite renderer dot enabled equals false and then we have to wait a while before we enable it again so we say yield return new wait for seconds point uh, one and then we say sprite renderer dot disabled uh, that's enabled sorry equals true and then we yield return new wait for seconds point one so this code will run as long as we are immortal. Um, so we put this into a coroutine so that we can wait, which means we need to start this coroutine somewhere. And we can actually start it before we wait for the immortal time. So we say start coroutine, um, indicate immortal. And there we have it. Now we can flash on and off, I think. See here. See here. If I take a hit now, it starts flashing on and off. And then now I'm not immortal, and now I'm immortal again. So now we have a way of indicating if we are immortal or not. As you can see here. But as you can see here, if the enemy kills the player, she still keeps attacking him. So we will need some way of telling the of, of telling the enemy that the player is dead so that she doesn't follow him or she doesn't attack him anymore. Um, we could do this in update and stuff, but I want to show you something else. I want to show you how you can create an event and then make the enemy listen to that event. And when the player dies, this event is triggered and then the enemy will know that okay the enemy the player is dead so I don't have to attack him anymore so let's have a look at how we can create an event to create an event we will have to create a delegate and a delegate is a way of passing on an, a function or reference to a function so to say um, we can also use delegates to pass on functions as parameters if that's what we want but for now we are going to create the delegate uh, so that we can actually create an event so we make a outside the class Remember to do it outside the class. Make a public delegate called and void. We call it dead event handler. So this is my delegate I'm going to use to create an event with. So I'm going to make a private. Uh, uh, let's just make it public. Public event. And this event is a dead event handler of the type delegate we just created and we call this dead. So this is an event that the enemy can listen to. So the enemy can say, okay, I want to listen to this dead event. If the dead event is triggered, well, then I know the enemy, uh, the player is dead. So the player needs to make sure that whenever he dies, he triggers this dead event so that the enemy knows that he's dead. And where do we know if the enemy player is dead? Well, we have a isDead function here, um, dead method here, 
that we can do we can call in but just to for good measure we will have to make sure that we don't have any null references so we're going to make a function under update here uh, after fixed update called public void on dead so when the player dies we say if dead if the dead event isn't null so if it exists this event then we call dead then we trigger the event so if someone is listening to the event and we instantiate it exists then we execute it so here we trigger the event and up here before we return to health we make sure that undead is called so um, we actually need to check if he's dead because right now we're not checking if he's dead so we say if health is less or equal to zero then we call the undead event and then we just return health or equal to zero um, yeah so there we go so now we're sure that we are triggering the undead event when when he's done dead so now we need to make sure that the enemy can listen to this event so that he he knows to stop attacking the player to do this we can make a method inside uh, enemy um, that is called remove target we have a look at target here we have change state and so on so we can actually make a new function here uh, public void remove target and it should set the target to null and it should change the state to new patrol state so right away when the enemy kills the player he will go into a patrol state so that he doesn't start uh, keep attacking the uh, the player so this remove target will be called when the dead event is triggered so now we need to tell the enemy that this one should be triggered when the um, player dies so in start if I could find my place, it's more down there. In start here, we'll have to make sure that this happens. So we can actually write um, player dot instance to get the player. We always have a player instance because it's a singleton dot dead. So we have a dead event here, and you can see it's an event because there's a little lightning here. So this event, well, we'll need to assign or make our um, remove target listen to this event so it gets triggered when dead is called so we make a new dead event handler and it needs a target and the target is remove target function and there we have it so now the remove target function will be called whenever the player's dead event is triggered so let's try this and see what happens falls down um, if I could move here let's see I should have given him less health that's one two and three let's see if we can four and then last time Five. Now I'm dead and she starts patrolling again. So now she doesn't just hit me when I'm dead. Um, she actually stops um, attacking me and starts patrolling around. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. And again, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel. If you want to, you can also support me in different ways. Because remember that Inscope Studios is a community founder page. Um, you can either go to the Patreon page to support me there or you can support me by getting this project or any of my other projects. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.